Andy Malone. I'm a Microsoft MVP as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. Microsoft 365 is one of the best collaborative platforms out there with tools like SharePoint, Teams, OneDrive. It's fantastic for internal staff, but also it's awesome because you can invite external guests as well. What do I mean by a guest? Well, it could be a customer, could be a supplier, it could be a member of the public that you want to participate in a team or in a SharePoint site. But just how it works can be a bit of a mystery. So in this week's episode of All You Need to Know, we're going to unlock the secrets of Microsoft Guest Access. Let's take a look. So for Guest Access, I suppose the best place to start is in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Now in here, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just show you a couple of important settings for guest access. And for this, I'm going to go into organizational settings. And in here, you can see that we've got a number of settings. Now, one of the reasons why you want to give guests access is for collaboration. So um, we need to come down to some of these collaboration services. So uh, for example, Microsoft Teams. So if I go into Teams here, very important settings. First of all, turn on Teams for all users, but this is it here. Allow guest access in Teams, okay? So this allows your users, your administrators to allow guests to participate within Teams. So that's the first thing. Now, um, because teams and groups are very closely connected, um, you also want to go into Microsoft 365 groups. And again, uh, for collaboration purposes, let group members outside your organization access group content. So again, let these uh, uh, options make sure that they're switched on. OK, so that's Microsoft 365 group. So that's important settings. OK, now another uh, set of settings, you can also go into SharePoint and this will take me to the tenant um, settings for permissions. So uh, again, you can specify here that um, you can make it the least restrictive. So basically anyone, users can share files and folders um, using links that they don't require a sign in. So anonymous access. New and existing guests. So they must provide or they must sign in or provide an authentication code. OK, so this is guests that you invite. The third option is existing guests only, and I'll be showing you this in a moment. So these are guests that exist in your organization's directory. And the most restrictive, of course, is the only people within your organization. And it does warn you, it says, okay, so with this option, nobody outside your organization would be able to see your content. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it for this, so new and existing guests um, uh, must sign in or provide a verification code. So that's the one that I'm going to choose. All right. And you can also set that setting in uh, Microsoft SharePoint itself. So those are the organization settings. Now what I'm going to do is to invite the guests, I'm going to go into Azure Active Directory. Now, um, while I'm in the admin center, by the way, just before I show you that, um, if I go into users here and active users, um, Microsoft 365 allows me to create users here, but you'll notice I can't create guest users. So there's no way for me to view guest users. I can, I can go into here and look at guest users, but there's no way to create them. I can only see them here, all right? So creating guests, you need to create them in Azure Active Directory. Azure Active Directory, as I've said in previous videos, is the cornerstone of Microsoft 365. It's its directory service where you store all your user accounts, your group accounts, and your contacts. So I'm gonna 
go onto this little pyramid here and I'm going to click into users. And in the users here, you can see it says a new guest user. Okay, so I'm going to click on a new guest user and I'm going to invite the user. Now, when I invite the user, I'm going to uh, put their name in. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to invite James Bond. Okay, so uh, I'm going to invite James at mi6.gov.uk. This is going to be fun because somebody at MI6 is now going to get an email for James Bond. <laughs> okay, so first name is James, second name is Bond. Okay, I can stick in a personal message. You know, uh, this will be in the email that they will send. Uh, so I'll say, come and join the party. Okay, so I can also make this user a member of a group, an, an Office 365 group, which, of course, if it's a Microsoft team, you can add that user to the team. So that's me as an administrator inviting this user in. I can either block or allow the sign in. One thing you might want to do is choose the location. So where this account is located. Um, so for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to choose the United Kingdom. Okay. I can put in a, jo in a job title for him. So I'll call him a spy and um, the, <laughs> the spies HQ. Okay. I'll stick him in there. All right, so I'm going to send him that invitation. So that invitation has now been sent, okay? So now I go into, so assuming that he'll get that invitation, he needs to acknowledge that invitation and then he'll get access, okay? So um, what I will do is I will just scroll down here and you can see that I've now got a user called James Bond. And you can see that he's a guest user because of the globe that's here. And um, if I flip back over to my 365 admin center and just refresh this page, again, you'll now see that I've got James Bond here as well. So I can click into James Bond. I can see his contact information. Um, I can, can't really, I, I can kind of manage it, but again, this goes into um, the, it goes into Azure Active Directory. So I'm just going to stick in here um, and there we go. So you can see that this user is a guest. Okay, so that's the first thing I've configured the guest access. Now, um, the other thing that you want to do is I can uh, also select the user. I can go into the user. I can go into this uh, user settings here. And again, it will take me uh, back into here. Um, and again, this is, do I want the user to have access? So for example, I can go in here and external users. So one of the settings is I can manage external collaboration settings for, for my users. Okay. Um, again, I can do the same thing here, by the way, by clicking on to users. Um, and you can do this in a number of ways, actually. You can either go into users and again, you can, uh, you can, you've got the user settings here. And uh, again, you can go back into that collaboration. So there's a number of different ways to do it. So here we go. Guest users permissions are limited. Yes or no. So again, this depends on, you know, your, your own security policies. Um, admins and users in the guest inviter role. So the guest inviter role in Azure Active Directory is a special administrative role that allows you to invite guests. So for example, this could be department managers within your company. So yes, that's fine. Members can invite. So members of teams or groups, again, that really depends on your security policy. So do you want administrators only to manage the invitations for guests? Or are you okay with users inviting guests as well? One thing though, guests can invite other guests. I'm thinking no for that one. Um, enable email one-time passcode. So you'll remember in the invitation that um, it prompts the user 
um, with a passcode, a, a one-time uh, four or five digit number. And that just confirms that it's their identity. Um, so yes, I'm going to uh, enable that. Um, guest self-service sign-in um, via Flows. So it, Flows, by the way, um, if they can uh, access a website, uh, the two flows, by the way, is a tool called Power Automate, and it automates processes. So, for example, if the user clicks in a website, enters a form, a series of events will take place. So that's what we mean by that. Um, then you've got some collaboration restrictions. So allow invitations to be sent to any domain. So anyone. Um, or do you want to deny invitations to a specific domain okay so and you can go down here so for example contoso.com I don't want invitations going to them all right um, or allow invitations only to the specified domain so only contoso.com only blue sky airlines get the idea so this can be the least restrictive to the most restrictive there Okay, just double tap that. Okay, um, so now that we've done that, I'm just going to save my external collaboration settings. And for, that's the kind of the directory settings for my users. So the next thing that I want to go to is I'm going to go back to my admin center. I'm going to, and there's just a couple of settings now in the various applications. So if I go and scroll down, I'm going to come into Microsoft SharePoint. So um, in Microsoft SharePoint here, uh, uh, again, what we have, we've got, this is the tenant. So the, this is the, the, the kind of the top level of our organization. And if I click into policies, one of the options is sharing. And these are those same four sharing options. Remember, I set this at the tenant earlier, and this is the same thing. So you can set the sharing options for SharePoint and OneDrive. And this is really important um, because obviously, if you um, if you you know say anyone can share content, the problem is if I was a guest in your in your team. Uh, I could then share to anonymous people and you would very quickly lose control of your content. So you can decide on the how restrictive you want the, sh the external sharing of files to be. All right. Um, the other thing, uh, so the other place, that's one place. So the other place is if I come back into my admin center and I go into Microsoft Teams, the final place to configure is you need to go into organization wide settings and we have this guest access here. So you can create a guest access. You can either say whether you're going to allow guest access uh, within Microsoft Teams. Are you going to allow them to make private calls? Probably not. Um, IP video, um, are, they, are you going to allow them chatting, messaging, um, to use GIFs, stickies, and so on? Again, you can decide on that. But the key thing here is to allow guest access. All right. So once you've done that, I can then go to the likes of my uh, Microsoft Teams, which is Microsoft's collaboration platform, of course. I can go in here, I'll just open up the web client instead here. And if I go to a, um, let's say a, a team here, so I've got this Trondheim sales. If I go into the team, uh, I can manage the team. And at this point, I've got members and guests. And I can go and say, hey, you know, I, I'm thinking, so I'll just dismiss that. Um, I will go and uh, do I want to bring in a, a, a guest? Do I want to invite any guests in? I can do that if I want to. Um, so, and you can see I've got one here. I've gone ahead and it, I've invited. So I can search for members. Um, and the other thing, because it's you've got guests in here, if you go into settings, you've got member permissions 
and you've got guest permissions. So what are you going to allow guests to do as opposed to members? Okay, so obviously members will have full access. Just to let you know that in Microsoft 365, um, when you create guests, you can have it on a ratio of five to one. So that means that for every paid user account in 365, you can have up to five guests, okay? And it, and it uses them uh, collectively, okay? So five guests for every user account in 365, okay? So there we go in Azure Active Directory, as well as some of the different settings um, throughout the platform to provide you with a truly collaborative experience. So there you have it, Microsoft 365 Guest Access. Absolutely fantastic for collaboration, and not just with internal users, but also with customers and suppliers. I really hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of All You Need To Know. Remember, if you have, Go ahead, click on that subscribe button up there and don't miss any future postings. In the meantime, you stay safe and take care. All the best.